So yesterday, I was asked from someone in the audience if I thought there were any room for open surgery within the laparoscope, within the ERAS protocol in the future, and I told you no. Uh, and um, ju just a few years ago, I would I, I would think that that would would be a stupid answer. But but the development within laparoscopy has been explosive the last few years. So um, I hope to be more clear on that today. I'm, I'm going to talk about the evidence for specific items for laparoscopy. But the truth is, uh, the ERAS protocol is designed for open surgery. So that there is not many evidence for the items uh, for laparoscopy. And, and I do, we don't know if we can translate the data on open surgery to laparoscopic surgery, but I'll try, I will try to, to explain some of these problems today. So let's go back to the 90s. Uh, this slide you, you saw yesterday, where we had a situation with, uh, 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 with colorectal surgery that is major surgery with a great risk of complications and we had no perioperative protocols, and mainly we did open surgery uh, with an uh, enhanced risk for surgical stress and complications. And there were two parallel solutions in, uh, on that problem, and the first one was the enhanced recovery after surgery protocol, mainly practiced in the Scandinavian countries and the Netherlands. And then there were uh, laparoscopic surgery, of course, uh, mainly practiced in, in the United States, France, and Germany. And of course, there were some cooperations between all, uh, these two solutions. For example, uh, early food after surgery and early mobilization was initiated by the laparoscopic surgeons and then adopted into the ERAS protocol. Uh, if we look at the evidence on both these uh, parallel solutions and start with the ERAS protocol, we talked about that yesterday. Uh, the amazing results from the, the Danish study in, in the year of 2000 that nobody really could believe was true. Uh, but these results were verified in, in several uh, coming studies within the ERAS uh, research field. Uh, here you can see a, a huge difference between length of stay in, in traditional surgery and fast-track surgery in the early results. Today, traditional uh, surgery results are, are much better than before because some of the items are, are actually used in the so-called so traditional perioperative protocol. But still we have a, a risk reduction for 50% and a 2.5 to 3 days shorter length of stay compared to traditional surgery. And looking into the evidence for uh, laparoscopy, uh, you would be surprised that uh, uh, good quality randomized controlled trials with low risk of bias are surprisingly <laughs> few. And if you look at the large studies, the large randomized studies done, conducted uh, cost, classic, and color conducted in 2004 and 2005, uh, the difference between open and laparoscopic surgery aren't that big. There are also some meta-analysis and a huge amount of single center studies, but without control groups. And the problem with all these studies are that they are not conducted within an ERAS environment. You know, they haven't used the best perioperative practice. And the procedures are mixed. You could see studies with a mixture with the low anterior resection, uh, right-sided hemicolectomies, and in the same study. And that makes it uh, introduce a lot of bias. Also, uh, in our, the, the large RCT, uh, RCTs, there is a selection bias toward high quality of treatment, of course. But these are problems that are known and that you know since before. Uh, if you look at the evidence then of, of the, the large randomized studies, you could easily see that 
for example, in morbidity, they couldn't show any difference between open and laparoscopic surgery. And also when it comes to length of stay, those studies didn't show any, any difference between the two uh, modalities. But in meta-analysis, and, and uh, yeah, we, th we have seen a reduction of wound complications and ileus. But then you have to remember that in those studies, cost, color and classic, the quality of lap the laparoscopic technique was not really good. Uh, and that uh, the quality of laparoscopic technique has developed a lot since then. So, now we have two parallel solutions, uh, enhancing recovery after surgery. So we should, of course, combine them. This is the obvious combination. Uh, and the first study conducted uh, comparing open and laparoscopic surgery within an enhanced recovery protocol was from Henry Kellett in 2005. And the, actually, this is the only uh, blinded study that couldn't see any difference between laparoscopic and open surgery. And then you see there are several randomized studies, but they are small and very heterogenic. 60 patients, 62 patients, uh, a little over 146 patients, and so on. The first uh, uh, study that really had the power to show any uh, difference or, or, uh, between the modalities was the LAFA study, the Dutch LAFA study, uh, conducted in 2011. And the LAFA study was designed in four arms, laparoscopy and ERAS, open surgery and ERAS, laparoscopy and traditional perioperative protocol, open surgery and traditional perioperative protocol. And the conclusion in this study was that uh, uh, the optimal intervention of, of colectomy for cancer was a combination of laparoscopy and a fast track protocol. They could see uh, independent predictors of outcome was that, that it was laparoscopic surgery, female sex, early food, and early mobilization after surgery. But as you can see, the ERAS protocol didn't fall out as an independent predictor, which was, which was quite surprising. But then look at the top there. You can see 73% compliance in the ERAS group and 40% compliance to the ERAS protocol within traditional perioperative uh, care, which is kind of surprising, and no wonder that the ERAS protocol didn't fall out as an independent predictor for outcome. So, uh, there is one more study uh, comparing the two modalities uh, within the uh, within uh, open and, and laparoscopic surgery within an ERAS protocol, and that is the Enroll study that is supposed to be closed now. And I, ha I heard some rumors, there are no results yet, but I heard some rumors that, that there seems to be two days shorter length of stay uh, from uh, laparoscopics to uh, compared to open surgery. But I also heard that the length of stay in the laparoscopic group for colonic surgery was five days, which is quite long in an aerospace pers perspective. So, uh, in conclusion uh, of evidence, uh, we are looking at the evidence slide that I showed yesterday. Again, we could see that there are moderate, a moderate level of evidence in favor for laparoscopic surgery. Uh, but does that really matter? I mean, is there a lack of evidence in favor for laparoscopic surgery? Both yes and no. Uh, but, you know, laparoscopy is an established surgical method now. And I think the era for randomized studies between laparoscopic and open surgery is over. And it's not, uh, the, the problem is it, it's not longer an, uh, a matter of evidence. I mean, uh, the, um, the patients request laparoscopic surgery. Uh, the surgeons uh, prefer laparoscopic surgery. And uh, it's not, no, lo and long, no longer a question about the pressure from the in industry. It's an established method. 
So I think in the future we will have only uh, laparoscopic and robotic surgery in the near future. Uh, and the, 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 the future will, will look into the, uh, to comparing laparoscopic versus robot, I think, rather than laparoscopic or robot versus open surgery. The problem is uh, the adaption to the ERAS protocol. We need, to, we need new studies to see if, there's, if the items are working as well in laparoscopic surgery as in open surgery. And we don't know that today. So uh, there are two problems, you could say, with the ERA study so far. The first thing is that, that all the best ERA studies so far conducted are using a very few number of items. These are the six best uh, randomized ERA studies using, you could see, uh, eight items or even four items as uh, when comparing uh, traditional surgery and, and the ERAS protocol. And there is only one study in the literature using compliance in laparoscopic, the laparoscopic technique, and that is the Dutch uh, LAFA study. So we need studies like this to know if the items are suitable for laparoscopic surgery. Here's uh, unpublished data from Stockholm or from Sweden, a multicenter study where we looked into right-sided hemocolectomies only. Uh, laparoscopic is blue, open is uh, gray. And we looked at compliance between the two modalities. And we saw that there was a difference in five of 21 elements. It seems to that we are giving sedatives to the laparoscopic patients, which was in error, uh, more than to the open patients, which is quite surprising. Why, you could ask. Uh, we are using less epidurals for laparoscopic uh, surgery uh, that we know since before. Uh, most centers has abandoned uh, uh, the epidurals for laparoscopic surgery. There seems to be harder to uh, wa warm up the patients during the operation in the laparoscopic group. I can't really answer why it is like that. We are giving postoperative relaxations in, uh, to laparoscopic group more than to the open group. There seems to be that the laparoscopic patients need less fluids during the operations compared to open surgery. Now, okay, there is a lack of, of evidence when it comes to the items. Just some thoughts on the, the, all the items isolated. Uh, is there any difference in uh, information before surgery? Of course not. No difference in nutrition. Preoperative carbohydrate uh, load should be the same for open and low, uh, laparoscopic surgery. Uh, there seems to be, when it comes to bubble prep, there is no evidence to justify bubble prep in laparoscopic surgery. But surgeons uh, myself included, tried to use bubble prep. Uh, and the argument has been that uh, the bubble will be too heavy, full with stalls, and harder to handle. And also that uh, you may need to do a colonoscopy during the, the operation to find a tumor. But on the other hand, it should be as easy just to tattoo the, the, the bubble before surgery. So. That is a question that has to be debated. Another question has been optimization before surgery. Some surgeons have said that if the patients had previous surgery, abdominal surgery, you should use the open technique. But nowadays, I don't think that this is a problem anymore. We are operating patients with previous surgery with the laparoscopic technique. Heart failure or venous return has been another question uh, through year, the years, but I don't think that's, uh, that is any problem anymore. Uh, when it comes to the perioperative items, there are some difficulties to warm up the patient during the operation. I don't know if there's, because of how the patient's uh, lay on the operation uh, table or 
if it's the gas that is uh, cooled down the patients during the operation or not. We have heard a lot about goal-directed fluids. You know, there's a weak spot in the, the EROS protocol or the EROS database, and that is we have a cutoff line for 3.5 liters for rectal surgery and 3 liters for, for colonic surgery uh, as being compliant to the, the, the protocol. But that is a really old-fashioned kind of thing to, to think. Uh, epidurals, of course, we don't use epidurals uh, in laparoscopic surgery anymore, although the evidence are, are quite weak so far. We are using spinal technique or abdominal wall neural blocks. When it comes, comes to postoperative items, no difference. You could argue that, I mean, one of the, the, the main gain thing about uh, uh, epidurals was that we could make an early mobilization of the patients. If we now are not using the epidurals in laparoscopic surgery, and let's say they get converted, uh, how, how about the mobilization? Okay, this is the last slide. I think, I mean, laparoscopic surgery and robotic surgery is actually the same operation. It's the same kind of surgery, but it seems to, that the learning curve for robotic surgery is much shorter than for laparoscopic surgery. And then the overall quality of uh, minimal invasive surgery will be much higher, higher quality on more hands. So I, I really think this is the future, and, and, and the diagnostic possibilities with the, the robot are fantastic with the robotic surgery. And I think that before I get retired, you will just put the patients in, in an MRI, and then you will dock on the robot and you push, push the start button. And then you have a coffee and focus at, at enhanced recovery. That's the future. Thank you.